We're going to be palpating the mandible. I'm going to be starting in the anterior kind of front part of it, and then we'll be working our way along the side lateral. So I'm going to be starting kind of in the front. So we have a couple different landmarks right in front of the chin here. Oftentimes, a lot of these things are going to have the term mental or menti associated with them. So I'm going to be starting right dead center. And technically, the mandible was in two pieces at one point in development, and it is kind of fused together. So there's a suture line that kind of runs down the middle or a symphysis. So you call this the symphysis menti and kind of a remainder, kind of bony landmark right towards the bottom, right in the middle here. This is known as your mental protuberance. And then on either side of the mental protuberance, you're going to have possibly a mental tubercle. I say possibly because it really does depend on genetics. Some people have a very large mental tubercle on either side. You can definitely tell in jaw and chin structure versus other people will just have mainly the mental protuberance in the middle, not so much the tubercles on the side. So as you're feeling that, kind of go back and forth from those four front teeth running down along this protuberance, and then check either to the left or to the right and see how those tubercles kind of feel. If you go above the tubercle, again, the four front teeth on this mandible are known as your incisors. So below that, there's an incisive fossa of the mandible. It's basically in the exact same location of the incisive fossa of the maxilla, right below. And we will discuss a muscle in a different video called mentalis that is originating in this location. So again, one more time, symphysis menti, mental protuberance, mental tubercle, and this incisive fossa. Just like of the maxilla, all of these teeth are in sockets, so you'll have them as alveolar processes, but specifically of the mandible this time, and not of the maxilla, but they'd be palpated very similar. We really are just palpating the outer portion of them, unless you're putting on gloved hands to go internally. I'm going to be turning the head to the side, and we're going to discuss these upper lateral landmarks, and then we will kind of connect these back together. So palpating up near the ear, just in front of it. If you've watched the temporal bone palpation, we've already discussed a little bit of this, but this is known as the head of the mandible, otherwise known as the condyle or condylar process. And this is a part of your temporal mandibular joint, TMJ. So as I'm palpating just below the zygomatic arch, I feel a nice round structure of the head. And again, to confirm that I'm on the head, I'm gonna ask my partner here to slowly open her mouth, good, and close it again. And I can easily feel the head or condyle of the mandible moving and going back up into its fossa. Below that, wherever there's a head, oftentimes there's a neck. We're not really gonna be palpating it, but just in case you are looking at a text and following along with that, head and then neck. And there's going to be a secondary projection heading up. However, this is often tucked up underneath the zygomatic arch. The secondary landmark in this location is known as your coronoid process, coronoid. And what you're basically going to do is find the zygomatic bone, drop off below it, and start to hook your finger back onto kind of where this ramus is until you start to feel a little bony resistance. Now, because the very tip of it is up underneath the zygomatic arch, you're going to ask the person to slowly open their mouth and as they start to open their mouth, your finger's gonna get pushed forward. You can see that happening right there. And as she closes, good. And let's do that one more time and open for me. So this is the coronoid process starting to drop out from underneath the zygomatic arch. So I have coronoid process and I have condylar process. And in between them is a notch. So the mandibular notch is basically kind of like, looks like a U shape or the space of bone in between this coronoid and condylar. I'm going to grab kind of from front to back of this mandible now, and this is known as your ramus. So as we're going down, I'm going to follow this mandible towards what is known as the angle, kind of this location, and that's how it's separate our body from the ramus here. So again, this can be finding the front just below where that coronoid process is, 
and I'm following it down. And you can see quite a bit of musculature in this area. So this is masseter, and that's covering the majority of this ramus in this portion here. So if you were to clench your jaw for me, please. Great, you can feel masseter as it's clenching and helping close the mandible or elevate the mandible at the temporal mandibular joint. So the majority of that is gonna be covered by muscle tissue. Again, the angle, quite easy to see, as it's a change in direction from this ramus towards the body. And then to the anterior part of this ramus, it's actually gonna have a change in direction where it feels like the bone comes down and starts angling out towards the body in the front of it. And this is known as the oblique line of the mandible. So I can palpate the front of the oblique line and that's gonna start pointing us forward. Now I like to use the oblique line to help us find one of our last mark landmarks on the outer side here, and this is known as the mental foramen. I'm gonna tip her back to a straightforward position. So there is a foramen on the mandible on the external aspect of it, and it is not kind of central, but if you looked at the corner of the mouth and dropped below, there's often a little bit of a pit or again, a foramen. So mental foramen. And just like the two previous ones in supra and infraorbital, if you to gently rest your finger, you will feel a slight pulse from this location. Okay, the last couple landmarks that we're gonna discuss are actually somewhat deep or internal, but not inside the mouth. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna bring her, turn her neck and I'm gonna show you kind of the bottom of this body right in here. I'm gonna go up towards this angle and by tipping her head in towards my chin, it's gonna soften up the neck a little bit for me to sink underneath and I'm just getting my fingertips up underneath. Take caution because we do have glandular tissue in this area, but this is known as a submandibular fossa right in this location. So hooking into that submandibular fossa. I'm gonna go a little bit forward and I'm gonna push a little bit harder and I'm getting a nice wall of resistance. So there is a large group of muscle in your hyoids, your superhyoids, and one of the large floor of your mouth is known as mylohyoid. So I'm running my fingers as best I can on the internal surface of the mandible along the mylohyoid line. So that's going to be fairly difficult to feel the line itself, but instead I'm feeling the musculature. If I can have you gently swallow for me, good. I get pushed out and then we sink back in. Let's do that one more time, pushed out and then back in. Lastly, we're gonna take a look straight on. If I went to the mental protuberance and the tubercle, I'm just gonna hook my finger under to the internal aspect of right in here. And there's two hyoid muscles right underneath, left and right. And this is known as your digastric. So let's have you look up towards the roof for us a little bit. Good, so right in here is the digastric fossa on both left and right. We cannot access the deeper structure from that, but if you were to push through, then you'd be getting towards what is known as the mental spines or genial tubercles since they have the same name. But that would be needing to put a gloved hand and go sublingual underneath the tongue, and we will not be doing that. So those are gonna cover the majority of the mandibular landmarks that we are gonna discuss.